Mr. Estes. Well, great. Th thank you, Representative Smith, and, and thank you to Kevin Hassler for, for joining us. I mean, you've given us so much uh, that, to talk about, and, I, you know, it's tough to figure out where to start. You know, as we, as we look at the employment numbers and, and the impact on the workforce, you know, 5 million jobs below where we were in February of 2020 and, and 7 and .5 million below where CBO had forecasted. And uh, we talked already about the labor, the labor participation rate being down uh, two and a, two, over 2.5% two since February of last year. Uh, we're kind of just witnessing what happens, a perfect storm of these incompetent Democrat policies uh, are joining together to to form these disruptions in the economy, seeing rising prices, you know, higher than 30 years, um, and and American Trucking Association is talking about uh, how many drivers they're going to lose because of vaccine mandates uh, when you already have have vacancies, um, you know, and and then you would talk a lot about the the taxing already and the Biden administration going and and, and moving forward with with adding more taxes on top of everything. I worry about the, the small businesses that are struggling to stay afloat during the pandemic and, and now are going to be uh, taxed out of business. You, you just talked a little bit about um, uh, how tax policy is driving jobs overseas, you know, and, and, you know, in terms of what, what the Biden administration is talking about, what they're going to do to the U.S. tax rate and other countries aren't necessarily going to follow. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask a little bit about, you know, uh, recently in a National Review article, uh, you wrote about the uh, the Biden spending spree uh, for socialist policies are going to cost about forty five thousand dollars in higher taxes and and you know dead weight loss to every man, woman, and child. But then you talked a little bit about you know that that's really going to hit one hundred and forty four million people who actually pay taxes really making the cost for them about $104,000 per person. <clears throat> when you talk about this, I mean, how does this affect the overall middle class and, and not just the wealthy Americans, but the impact on the, on the middle class Americans? Oh, yeah, sure. They, yeah, the, the way to think about it, uh, sir, is that uh, if, you know, once the government spends a dollar, then eventually we have to pay for the dollar. And, you know, there's going to be a higher tax in the future or lower spending in the future, but probably a higher tax. Uh, and um, if you don't pay it back, which is something that we've seen happen as debt is piled up, then instead you just sort of pay a little bit of interest each year. But as you know, if your credit card bill is getting bigger and bigger, then that's making it so you can't spend money on other stuff. You're spending money on interest. And so when you spend money on interest, you can think of that as being like paying it back by getting fewer government services, like a worse infrastructure, you know, a weaker military and so on. And so what this Biden spending binge is doing is it's basically, you know, imposing a huge tax on Americans and it'll either be, I, as we can see here, there's a big tax hike, uh, even on uh, low and, and middle income people in the bill because of the incidence of the corporate tax. But there's that uh, direct effect of they actually lift your tax. But then there's the indirect effect, too, that we keep spending more and more on interest. Uh, and also, when the government borrows money, then that's money that can't be spent in the private sector to create jobs. And so that crowding out effect is in the in the Penn Wharton model that I know a lot of you guys are looking at today. That's where the big negative growth effect comes in their model. Yeah. Well, Grant, I, I appreciate you doing this. It's been a, a good hearing to go through. So I'll yield back, Mr. Chairman.